had people with names such as Freddie, Freddie Hubbard, yeah. Donald Byrd, Jackie yeah. McLean. All yeah. these people have come under your tutelage. You have over 200 people you've you've put together. Uh, what do you uh, give yourself the credit for? What do you what do you uh, attribute all that genius to? I don't give myself the credit. I give them the credit because they're the ones who did it. You know, they just came, <clears throat> and what we did is. Uh, I feel fair exchange is no robbery, you know, so you exchange, you know. I learn from them and they learn from me. I feel that this is, uh, uh, we as Americans and uh, older Americans and senior citizens, I think that we should hand down our knowledge and our wisdom to the younger people and so that they can go on and take it further. Now, this is an and, interesting story about you starting out in the, in the business, you weren't just a, a a drummer at the beginning. You were a pianist, right? Yeah, I was a pianist, and I worked in the steel mills and the coal mines in the daytimes, and I played at night. And it was just a matter of survival because I'm a depression baby at that <laughs> time. It was very hard. And uh, we had child labor. It was very hard in that way. And I feel that the younger people have it much harder than I did because uh, at least I have a choice. You know, I mean, they have a choice. I didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. And I just had to do, to uh, play drums to survive because I couldn't play piano good enough. Mm -hmm. now and you... Earl Garner took my job, so mm -hmm. that was it. <laughs> <laughs> People like Fast Waller affected you, oh, and yeah. Tatum. Yeah, I remember all those guys, yeah. Now, you've, you've been playing for 44 years. When are you ever gonna quit? Hmm? When are you ever going to quit? Well, you don't quit your work. You don't quit things that you love because playing music is my life, you know, and that's it. You know, and so when they pat me in the face with a shovel, then I quit. <laughs> you know, that's it. Yeah. Now, that you've been playing, do you have to slow down now at the age you are now? Do nah, you play less yeah. How many gigs do you play I never in think here? about that. How many gigs do you play in here? Uh, we work all the time, as much as possible. I'm always on tour because it's part of it. I can't lay off. I take my family on tour with me so that they can be with me, but I can't. Uh, uh, well, people say, well, take a uh, vacation and do this. I don't feel that you have time to do that. I feel that uh, you should do everything you can while you can do it. I take my family with me. I have no problems, you know, all my children, and uh, I love them, they love me. And I'm a punitive father of seven. I have adopted five, so I have 12 children. And we've had no problems, and I just take them with me because I can't. If I take a vacation, and if I am off eight, nine days, I'm ready to climb walls, I have to play. Because that's my job, and that's what I love. And it's like anything else. If a person loves what he's doing, you just do it. It's not a job to me. I just enjoy it. Jazz is something many people take for granted. But yet America is just coming into discovery of jazz. There's fusion, there's free jazz now. People are expressing them way, their selves in jazz. The emergence of names like Chuck Mangione, who happens to be a protege of yours. Uh, what is really jazz, and what how is it as an art form? It's an art form because it is black music. It's because it started in New Orleans with uh, Louis Armstrong. It has a lot to do with the spiritual. It come out of the sanctified church. It's like anything else in there. Yeah, it's oppression and out of it and our whole society. No America, no jazz. It's oppression and it came out came out of the first line and they marching back from the cemetery. So someone goofed and jazz was born and it's just one of those things. And I think that uh, God smiled upon us at that time and he gave us that. It's a weapon and has swept across the globe through political, through religion, through any kind of ethnic groups. Jazz has come straight through. And you'll find that in foreign countries, uh, the most famous men from our country, even famous than the president, more famous than any of the presidents we have is Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, Benny Goodman. These men are famous. 
you know, throughout the world. And they came, and they played, and they did what they had to do. And I feel that jazz is uh, the highest performance on a musical instrument. It's the highest performance. Now, we have symphony music and everything, but you can take a jazz musician, sit him in a symphony orchestra, he will play and add something to it. But you can't take a symphony musician and put him up on the stage with a jazz group because he hasn't been taught to improvise. And this is the difference between. And people must learn that and appreciate that because we have so many things going over here for us, for everything, and this is why jazz has been slow, and we have different factions. If you go to Germany, most of the people are Germans. If you go to Russia, most of the people are Russian. Japan, most people are Japan. If you come to the United States, you find all different factions, and it'll take longer. But it is the greatest country in the world. It now, just takes time. You, you have a young pianist by the name of Jim Williams, mm -hmm. who is a brilliant young man. Yeah. He's influenced by Thelonious Monk. Right. Who influenced the master, Art Blakey? Well, I have, uh, everybody has an idol. My idol was Chick Webb, uh, Sid Catlett, you'd be surprised, <laughs> Ray Perdue. Uh, these type of people helped me out. And Gene Cooper. Chick Webb uh, taught you, didn't he? Uh, no. Kenny Clark, uh -huh. the okay. gentleman from Pittsburgh. You know, that was Kenny Clark. But uh, Chick Webb had a lot to do with me and teaching me how to play. But it was Kenny Clark was my biggest influence because he came from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. and he joined the uh, Mills Blue Rhythm Orchestra and uh, went overseas and came back. He joined Teddy Hill. And uh, by him coming from Pittsburgh and always coming back, and seeing these great artists, and what happens to the kids today is when artists get great, they disappear from the kids, and they don't see them, and they should be around the kids. They can learn something, and the kids can learn something. You can always learn something from the kids, but what happens, they disappear. Maybe that's because of economical reasons, and they don't see them, or they have to go play golf, or they have to go make a television show. But I feel that they should be around the kids. A man by the name of Jackie McLean, mm -hmm. Freddie Hubbard, and several others mm -hmm. joined you in 1979. They formed the Co Curbstone, or the Keystone Corner, corner Band. And you happen to uh, be in that. And there's something about that is because jazz, as you say, is improvisation. But yet, it's something that has not really been successfully done. Mr. Uh, I think Barkhan had been uh, formed some set, set groups such as that before. But yours was successful. What would you attribute? Is that the, was that the proper mix? And uh, did you enjoy doing that? Oh, yes. I enjoyed it. And what we did, the idea, it would be successful, but those those who, hey, went, wait, wait, wait. those who played the music, uh, it was their choice for the record companies to come and say, well, you play this, you play this, we'll allocate so many thousands or half a million dollars or a million dollars, and you do this, you know? This is what I call selling out, you know? I, uh, believe in this music because it is the truth and it takes time and any truth anything the truth falls on it will grind into powder but it just takes a long time and you don't change horses in midstream i try to teach all my musicians but it's still their decision some musicians they go out they need money and they go into rock and they're very successful and they get the money but they come back they cannot play jazz they cannot come up on the stand with my youngsters. They're finished. They are, so they have to sell out for that. And I just can't make it. I can't do that. Finally, many of your records are classics. They're registered at the Smithsonian Institute as classics. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us some of those records? What are some of those records that are classics? Oh, well, I think uh, Blues March from Monin and uh, <clears throat> the group with Freddie Hubbard and Wayne Shorter, and I think there's a lot of things that we did there, and the ones with Clifford Brown, the ones with Luke Donaldson, 
I think that they just come along because this is the way we felt. We felt that we should play. And they, there's still what they call the hardcore jazz musician out there. There's young guys coming out. There's Woody Shaw with his group. Well, Horace Silver's been out there for years. He's not going to turn around. There's a lot of the musicians that are hardcore, and they're out there playing because this is what they believe in, Dexter Gordon. Well, there's a lot of musicians out there, and I'm very proud of them. But it is the choice of the person of what he wants to do, or what he feels that he wants to play, you know? Excuse me, Your, our own Al Bright played with you tonight. Yeah? Huh? He played, played flute with you tonight. Al Bright from Youngstown yeah. played on flute with you. Mm -hmm. What do you think of him as an artist and even as a musician? Well, as an artist, I mean, he's a genius. He's a genius. He's a genius. And his uh, most important thing with, with Al is his painting, you know? The flute is a side thing. Of course, he can do anything. This man is so talented. Whatever he wanted to do, he can do it, you know? But his whole thing is in painting, and I'm very happy about that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thank you.